subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon, so you never miss any video from my channel. Yo! Welcome to Kevin TV. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share your cool things like Facebook and Reddit and Instagram, wherever else. And guys, again, thank you for the 500 subs. You know what I'm saying? I, I just want to show my appreciation, but uh, y'all know what time it is, man. You see the Panthers jersey on, so I got to talk about some Panthers stuff. Uh, recently, Ron Rivera did kind of like a position breakdown of what we need to attack in the draft or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I never get my take on it. So, I decided to tell you guys where I agree and disagree with the guy. So, let's get started. Now, guys, I'm human. I am a human, you know, and um, I have fears. And one of my fears is to see the abysmal run game that the Carolina Panthers had last year. The sheer fact that Cam Newton led our team in rushing is atrocious. We had we had one of the best run games in the league. Like we was like we had a streak of I think like thirty something games, maybe more than that, of hundred yard rushing. And yeah, part of it was because of Cam Newton, but the other running backs held the running backs held their weight, you know. They did what they had to do. Now mind you, they were never great. Like, you know what I'm saying? John Stewart wasn't like, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh Adrian Peterson or, you know what I'm saying, uh DeMarco Murray's, you know, that year in Dallas or, you know, LaShawn McCoy or whatever. Or David Johnson. But he did what he was supposed to do. Now, Ron Rivera, you know what I'm saying, talked about the running backs. And uh, he was like, we got this guy on our roster that never really had any reps. And, you know, I think he might be able to carry the load. And this and that and third. And um, he's talking about uh, Cameron Artis Payne, also known as Cap. Um, and I got some people in my comment section saying, oh, man, we don't need a running back. Cameron Rice Payne can carry the load and this and that there, right? This is how I feel about the situation. And for the people in my comment section that feel like Cameron Rice Payne can carry the load, this is how I feel. I don't, I don't think Cameron Rice Payne, Payne can carry the load, right? And I might be wrong. I have, you know, I have no problem being wrong. I mean, that's a good thing if I'm wrong. But um, what I can't stand is you know, in this very deep running back draft, because it's a very deep running back draft. We do not get a running back. We don't just run back decision at all. And we end up in a situation where we have Cameron Artis Payne who can't carry the load. And we have a horrible run game because that run game is what fuels our whole offense, man. Our offense predicates on the run. Defense and run game. Defense and run game. You know what I'm saying? What we're trying to do is keep that identity, which is defense and run game, and just add, you know, a viable passing attack, which we, we haven't had. You know what I'm saying? So, for me, like, we can't play around with the running back position. Now, mind you, do we have to go first round and get a running back? Not necessarily. But I definitely think we should draft a running back in this draft. Because what happens is, you know, because I mean, they said that same thing about Brenton Burson. You know, when when players go down, they said they said that a bunch of times about a bunch of people who who couldn't hold it. You know, couldn't hold the camera. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, Philly Brown's gonna be he can do it up. You know, he's he's you know, or this guy, you know, whatever. Listen, man. All right, don't take chances with our run game, especially if it's the main component of our offense. Our offense is already abysmal. Our offense is let's be honest, guys. Our offense is the weak point of our team. It has been a weak point since, like, basically Ron Rivera got there. You know what I'm saying? Our defense has always been good with Ron Rivera, but um, our offense hasn't. So, our offense is a weak point, you know? Um, so, I don't want to play around with a weak point on, you know, on our team with not, you know, fueling it with more draft picks and, and more better players. You know what I'm saying? I think Cam Martin's playing. I like, I, look, I like Cam Martin's playing. I have no problem with him, but... I just don't want to take a chance and he fail, and then we gotta go in the next and it ruins our season. And next year we're in the same boat. And now we gotta get a running back because we realize that Cameron Payne can't do it. Get an insurance policy. You know what I'm saying? Have an insurance policy. If cat get draft a running back, whatever, maybe in the third round, fourth round. You know what I'm saying? Because there's still there's still gonna be some pretty good running backs in the third round. Get a running back in the third round if you want to. But he's insurance. So if Cap can't do the job. You know, if anything, we could trade him. If Cap can, if Cap can do the job, we could just trade this guy. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But don't be in a situation where you don't have an insurance policy. 
Look, they, they even do that free agency. They got all these the, all these cornerbacks and these safeties just because, you know, they need insurance policy. So they won't have to be forced to draft a cornerback or a safety. We need insurance, you know, we need insurance policy. You could have cap the insurance policy and draft the other running back, or the other running back could be insurance policy for cap, whichever you want to do. And everybody's on, and then now people will be like, oh, Christian is this. I'm not, I'm not saying Christian is a, you know, I think he's a more of a scat back, in my opinion. Um, people blame the old line, but I mean, we got Pro Bowlers. Like last year, we had Pro Bowlers all, all through the whole line. Andrew Norwell was, a, you know, all pro. Ryan Khalil was a Pro Bowler. And yes, Ryan Khalil played like, I think, three or four games for the end of the season. But even Ty Larson didn't do a bad job. Trey Turner's a Pro Bowler. Daryl Williams rated really high on Pro Football Focus. You can look that up. I think he was like an 84, you know what I'm saying, rating on right tackle. He was, a, he was a surprise. He was a very good right tackle. You know what I'm saying? That's why Taylor Moten didn't even get in much last year. So our own line was not abysmal. It wasn't like, you know what I'm saying, it wasn't horrible. But I don't think he's more of an inside runner. So for me, you know, I like Ron. I think Ron is a great coach. I think he's, he could, he's arguably one of the best coaches we ever had. But um, I just don't agree in that point. You know what I'm saying? I de- and I, I think they're gonna draft a running back because they're you know they've been interviewing running backs. Uh, the guy one running back I forgot his first name, but his last name is Penny. They you know what I'm saying they're, they're checking out his pro day. I think they're bringing him in. You know what I'm saying for a personal workout. So they they they've been doing their due diligence. I, I think they they will draft a running back. It may not be in the top rounds, but I think they will. So now the tight end position. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Ron was saying we don't really need a backup tight end. Um, he was talking about Chris Manhurts and how he's developing and everything like that, whatever, because and we let Ed Dixon walk, whatever. Um, I don't have no problem with Ed Dixon walking. You know what I'm saying? I like Ed Dixon. He was a good player, but, you know, I, you know, we got Greg. But here's the thing. Greg is starting to scare me now. He's starting to scare me. All right? He's looking into the analyst position too much. I don't think he'll become an analyst now, but, you know, maybe in, like, next two years, that's a possibility. Maybe he don't want you know come back to football after his contract is up. We'll see. But Greg is starting to scare me. So my thing is this, you know what I'm saying? Um, do I? I don't think I think we should draft a tight end in the later rounds. Now, mind you, when I mean later rounds, I mean like because this this is a they said this is also a deep uh, tight end draft, but not a lot of teams need tight ends. So what you do is maybe in like the fifth round. This is, this is my my suggestion. You know, we got two seventh rounders and a sixth rounder. Maybe trade the seventh and one of the sevens and one of the sixth, go back into the fifth, and have two fifth rounders, drive a tight end. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? But don't, um, or maybe give both sevens up and get a sixth and whatever. But, uh, I wouldn't, I would, like, I might, if they don't drive a tight end, I, I wouldn't be, be mad really because obviously, you know, we got Greg Olson. I think he's still a very good tight end. Um, but I just feel like, you know, Greg is starting to scare me and Chris Manhurts, I have to see how he develops, man, because, um, you know, last year he didn't get that much playing time, you know, obviously because of Ed Dixon. He got playing time behind, um, you know, behind when uh, Greg Olson was injured and Ed Dixon was in. He got some playing time, but for the most part, he wasn't playing that much. You know what I'm saying? He didn't do that much for me, whatever. We'll, I will see how he progresses in his second year, whatever. But, um, you know, I, I'm, not too, I'm not too mad about that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not too mad about that. Um, if they don't, if they don't get another tight end, I want that wouldn't phase me. So I'm I'm perfectly fine with that, whether Ron wants to or not, because I I feel like our tight end position is not bad. You know what I'm saying? Where I feel like it's running our running back position. Yes, we spend the number eight pick on Christian McCaffrey, but you need you need a bigger back. You need a bigger back, and Cameron's Payne's gonna try to assume that position. But we'll see what happens, man. I, I I don't know. I don't trust that. So we'll see what happens in that situation. And finally. Ron talked about the defensive end position. He was talking about DNs. And uh, I agree with Ron in this situation. I agree wholeheartedly. Because Ron said something I've been saying for, for a while now. I've been saying it for a while. Uh, people were uh, in my comment section like, oh, man, we need defensive end. Oh, man, you know, you know we, we need one, man. You, you're crazy if you don't get one. Listen, man, okay? This is a team that had 50 sacks last year. This is a team that they, they had high sacks almost every year, man. All right? We had a Charles Johnson who, I don't think he registered a sack last year, maybe one. And we still have 50 sacks. 
And they're like, oh, yeah, but our defense ends are old. Mario Addison is like 31 or something like that. And uh, Julius Peppers is 38. Okay, you're right. They are old. But guess what, man? Ron Rivera said it best. He said two things, which I've noticed last year. He said, one, Deshaun Hall needs to step up. The reason why he said that was because Deshaun Hall got drafted last year with a third pick, a third round pick, and he got, you know, he played a little bit in the San Francisco game, he got injured for most of the year. So he had to sit on the bench. I was saying the whole time, Deshaun Hall needs to step up. We didn't draft him for no reason. We didn't draft him to be, you know, on like a rotational player. We drafted him, well, maybe, but we drafted him so he could be a contributor, and he did not contribute last year. We had 50 sacks, and this guy did not contribute at all. If he gets five, maybe ten sacks next year, let's, let's say it's ten too much. Let's say he gets five to seven sacks next year, right? You think Judas Peppers can't get the other, what, like three, four? You know what I'm saying? To make like 10 or 11 sacks? Judas Peppers had, like, I think, like 11 sacks last year. Charles Johnson, did, I don't think, registered a sack. So if them two equal out to 11 sacks, is that bad? That's basically the same thing Charles Johnson and Judas Peppers put out last year. It was all Judas Peppers and no Charles Johnson. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's 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 being like gracious. I think I think uh, Deshaun, Deshaun Hall could get like five sacks. And I think Pep could still probably get like another five. You know what I'm saying? Maybe six. Especially as a rotational player, I definitely think he can get another five or six. I mean, look, he just had eleven last year. Come on, man. He was like, what one year later? He's gonna go from eleven to freaking zero. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I definitely think Deshaun Hall needs to step up. So I agree with him on that point. The other thing he said was Wes Horton is a key piece to the defense, and he's right, man. Wes Horton was making plays last year. Now, mind you, he wasn't like a mega star. He, I, he wasn't that. But he was definitely making plays. He, I think he had a strip sack and a crucial point in the game. He, he, he was making plays, man. And even Ron Rivera said himself that they were, they need to be better at developing him. They need to put more time and effort in him because he showed flashes last year. And I think he could be a good player for, for us. You know what I'm saying? I think Mario Addison still got another, like, 10 sack, maybe uh, 12 sack year in him, you know? And I think Wes Horton could, could put up, you know, maybe five, six sacks. So if Deshaun and Wes Horton put up five, six sacks, and this is, being, this is a low ball in them because I think they could put up more, but this is really low ball in them. I think if, I, if they put up five, six sacks, and Julius puts up, oh, well, um, you know what I'm saying, five sacks, and Mario Addison puts up 10 sacks. That's 25 sacks between four people. And that's literally if I lowball Deshaun Hall and I lowball West Horton and give them five each. And he still got Dontari Poe and K1 Short. And he still got the blitzes that, that well, last year we'll call them the crap little business, so I don't know if Eric, Eric Washington is going to do the same thing. But um, that's not going to come to blitzing. That's, not, that's, that's, that's good production, man. So we don't have to go out there and spend a bunch of draft picks on DNs or a first round draft picks, second round draft picks on D. Why, man? We got like a roster of DNs, and we we all. I even talk about Brian Cox Jr., who you know I don't think he he probably get like one sack this year or whatever. But I'm not, I don't talk about him much. But you know, at least Deshaun Hall and West Horn, I could think could get some serious production. Guys, we, we, DN is not a major priority for me. What's a priority is running back, receiver. Safety and corner. Those are positions I think we definitely need. Now you can play mix and match and figure out what position, what time, and how you want to do it, what you know, which one you should attack first. Me personally, if I had my druthers, I would attack receiver, running back, safety, corner. Now listen, I know in my mock draft I did running back receiver. Uh, safety corner. But the thing is, is that the receiver I was looking forward to was just Calvin Ridley. You know what I'm saying? I was assuming he wouldn't be in that position because I don't think he's going to be in that position. I still don't think he's going to be in that position. Now, mind you, I, and I feel like if you go for DJ Chark, I kind of feel like it's kind of a reach. I don't know if he's going to be 
that high in the draft. So that's why I went with running back because that's also a need um, uh, position I need. Now, mind you, you could, be, you could go safety. I wouldn't have no problem with that. But, you know, obviously, you know, it depends on what safety you want to get. Maybe you're Justin Reed. Maybe, you know what I'm saying, a Jesse Bates. Whatever, you know. So, you can kind of mismatch them. I don't know. Whichever, you know, whatever position you feel like is more in dire straits, you can use that. But, um, I was just, and I also thought, put took into consideration that Marty Herney used two first-round picks on D'Angelo Williams and John Stewart. I thought he wouldn't mind doing it again with, uh, well, not him, but with, uh, Christian McCaffrey, the first, number eighth pick, and then maybe a uh, Darius Geis with the 24th pick. That's my mindset. But that's how I feel about that. Well, that's it for me, guys. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share with y'all. Cool things like Facebook and Reddit and Instagram and wherever else. And definitely tell the rest of Panther Nation and all your Panther friends and family about the channel so you can check it out. You know what I'm saying? Comment. We can start a whole little you know community, man. You guys, you're a Panther Nation to me, man. We're Panther Nation all day. Get in the comment section, guys. Tell me what you think about Ron Vers, uh roster breakdown about how he feels about the running backs the tight ends and dns you know what i'm saying do you like it do you dislike it do you agree with him do you don't agree with him let me know how do you feel about my you know analyzation of uh the roster breakdown what i think is more important what i think we should, what i agree and what i disagree let me know in the comment section and um thank you guys again for finding your subs we gotta keep it going and you know if you guys riding with me i'm riding with y'all thank you again and i'll see y'all next time